what's up guys, Fabp96 here, and we are back once again. I am teaching you guys how to make a server on 1.7.10. A couple things have changed, not anything extremely difficult, but I'm just going to run you guys through it for those of you who are new to making a server. Alright, so let's just jump into this. So in the last video, I had a couple questions for some people, and I'm going to answer that in this, in this video of the new servers, and uh, some errors that have been coming up, and I'm going to teach you guys what is going on and how to fix it. So, um, we... At the Minecraft.net page, you just want to download the server, Minecraft Server 1.7.10 executable file, and you just want to put that in a folder. Any folder, mine's 1.7.10. As you can see, I run a bunch of servers, modded, anything like that. I, I need it. I, I do YouTube videos. I, I need a Minecraft server that friends and people can join. So, we're just going to get in here. We're in, the, we're in the folder, and right here, you just want to double-click, run the server once, and then that's it. Now... Right here, what you want to do is you want to go into EULE. I I did I, I looked through some things. I saw what I have to do on the wiki pages and like a bunch of other stuff. So apparently now Minecraft is making you um, accept a user agreement through EULE, which is their basically their user agreement to make servers, not to redistribute files and stuff like that, not to make anything like bad. So you just need to accept these files. I'm not doing anything bad on these, so obviously I'm gonna accept. Just save. And then by doing that, let's see if it actually did say true. All right, so by doing that now, as you can see, there's not a lot of stuff. In my last server tutorial, you saw there was a bunch of stuff in this folder. Now there's nothing. And you might be wondering, why isn't there anything there, Fabio? And because you have to accept the terms and agreements, then you need to run it one more time. And now Java will come up because last time, as you saw, Java did not come up. Now Java comes up and then there's a bunch of stuff in the thing. Just want to type in sto stop, not stoy. And then that will stop the server. There we go. And then now you have everything that you need in the server. So now at this point, now all we want to do is we want to go to our router and port forward. Yes, this is a port forwarding video. Don't be upset. Don't be scared about port forwarding. Port forwarding is easy. That's what I'm trying to teach you guys. The only difficult part about port forwarding is logging in and finding the, the place you need to get in your router. The UI of every router is different. I'm not going to say this is going to work 100% for everyone. Some people might not comprehend how to get into, this, into the router. It might be difficult for them. If that's the case, I'm sorry this video is not for you. This is a simple method if you know how to get around, how to look for things, because you do actually have to look for things. You're trying to make a server. You're not running a game, which is just clicking a button. So right here, all you want to do is you want to log into your router to know your password and username. There are, there are two things that I've done. Okay, one, you can look on your router. On your physical router, it might say your password and username. That's one way. The second way is, all right, there's three ways. The second way is typing in the usual um, username and password, which would be admin. I can't spell. Admin, admin for your username and your password. It might differentiate and stuff like that. Just keep trying. You might want to look around and see what your usual thing could be. On my particular router, people changed it. My The person who installed my router, they changed the username and password. But thankfully enough for Verizon, they actually put the username and password in the act, on the actual physical router. So I'm thankful for that. If none of these cases work, if admin admin doesn't work, if other things don't work, and if it's not on your physical router, what you want to do is you want to check on you want to check on with your ISP. So you want to call them up, see I'm trying to get my username and password. They should give it to you. If they don't, that sucks. You're you might want to change ISPs. Uh, so this is like Time Warner, Comcast, Verizon, AT&T. Whatever you have, you should be able to get this. Usually. So I already know mine. So I'm just going to log in. There we go. So I'm in my router. So what I want to do here is you want to go to the advanced tab. Some sort of advanced tab in your router. So you want to go to proceed. You want to go to port forwarding rules. And at the beginning, you saw me accept something that was just saying that if you do anything to mess up your router, it's your cause. Don't be scared about this. Just don't go poking in things you don't know. Find something that is port forwarding. Port forwarding is what you're looking for. Not system config files and don't go mess, messing around with that. Actual port forwarding. It should say that. It's simple enough. For the purposes of this video, I will be deleting my Minecraft. So I just want to go here. I want to get rid of my firewall of Minecraft. So over here, delete. And that's done. So now back here, yes rules okay so I just want to delete my minecraft server it's simple enough to re remake so just go here delete and that's done so we're gonna create that port again that is a port that connects you to people around the world so minecraft that's what we're gonna name it so then you just want to add server ports and here you want to go TCP 
any as your source ports and destination is single. 25565, that is the usual um, port for Minecraft. And then you want to go add another port, UDP. Here you still want to keep it single, any and single. And then you want to go 25565 again. And then that's it. Your port is done. Now, to make this port accessible to other people without having to get through your firewall, because firewalls can be a hectic, you want to go over here. If this is not in your actual router, then it might be somewhere in your computer. That is a different thing. Because of my specific router, I can only show you this method. It's the only method I know because I don't have a different router. I will put down in the description below that there is some other methods of doing this. Um, there's a website that you can go to. It'll teach you how to do a bunch of port forwarding rules, and you can just go check that if you want. This is an actual step-by-step -step video. If you have a Verizon router, great on you. This is for you. This is exactly what you need to do to make a Minecraft server. So what you want to do here is you want to accept, go to port forwarding again. Over here, you just want to go to specific IP. And from here, what you want to do is type in your IPv4 and your IPv4 address. So I'm going to do that right now. There we go. Then go over here to applications to forward, which is Minecraft. And then that should be it. And port forwarding is done. Done with that. We have our port ready. Now we want to go to 1.7.10 here. Now you want to go into server properties. You want to type in your IPv4 address in where it says server IP. Right here. And you want to type in your IPv4 address. And then that's it. You just want to hit file, save, and you're done with that. Now, the next step is you want to go to new, text document, double click that. You want to copy and paste this. This will be in the description below. Now listen to me right now. This step is important. I run my servers at four gigabytes. That is me. If you want to run your server at one gigabyte, then all you want to do is 10, 24. That is one gigabyte. But for me and my actual uses, I need four gigabytes on my server. I run mods. I do a bunch of stuff and that's it. Also, the next thing you want to do is in the server.exe, you want to change that as well. You want to type it as exactly how, how it is on your ex executable file. So what you want to do here is 0.1.7.10. You want it to be exactly what is as the executable file. It can't be different or it won't work. You just want to save, no, file, save as. You could do whatever, asgg.bat, run.bat, it does not matter as long as it is a bat file. Hell, it could be like poop.bat it'll still run okay so now what you want to do is you want to go to text document save under all files if you do text document it will not work you want to do it under all files with the little face right there and then you just want to save then you are done you have the run.bat it is fine it's ready to go and then you just run that your server should be up we have 98 percent free of our memory that is right here and that's it your server should be up now i'm going to go over here head over to minecraft to prove to you guys that the server is up and running and yeah so i am under 1.7.10 play i just need to download a couple things because it's the first time i'm, I'm going on 1.7.10 all right so now you just want to go to multiplayer and this is my server this is my server how you connect to your server is completely different to how your friends answer, get into your server. This is a question I had multiple times on the comments below in my last server tutorial video. What you want to do is you can do two things. You, you can type in your public IP. To get your public IP is you want to go to Google. And you want to Google. It's not difficult, people. IP. Your public IP is right here. This will be blurred out because this you don't want to give your public IP just to any random person. You want to give it to friends. You want it to people actual who you know and trust. Because you could get DDoSed. A bunch of things could happen. You want to keep this specifically to your friends. So now that we have our public IP, you just want to copy and paste it in. And then there you go. I have the two files right there. It's the same exact thing. It's the same exact my public IP right there. This is how your friends join. You might be able to join through here. If not, try your IPv4 address. If not, try local host, try a bunch of different things. Those are the three possibilities. Local host, IPv4, and public IP. That's it. You just want to join. And you are in your server. Apparently, I'm underwater. Uh, not a really good place to spawn, but yeah, that's basically it. That is how you make your server. That is it, guys. That's all you need to do. 
Now, with this, you need to op yourself. If you want to op yourself, just go into your your Java prompt. You want to type in op your name, your username, and then the server should say opt. That's it. You are opt on the server. You can go game mode one. You can do whatever, creative. If you want to make this a server just where you mess around in creative mode with your friends, you need to op yourself and them. That's it. Now, I'm going to answer the questions that were in the comments below down. If you are good, if you got this done already, you don't you, you don't have any problems, you're done. This is it. For those of you who are having additional problems, listen to this part. It might help you. It might not. I will do as best as I can to answer the comments down below. So, yeah. Well, let's just stop our server right now. It's wasting uh, CPU. So, I want to tell you guys a statement I need to say before we keep going. Um, the servers we are making are on our routers, and these routers constantly change their IPv4. Your IPv4 may change from one number to another, and to that's going to change. So if every time it changes, you might not be able to get into your server. You're going to be like, what's going on? I'm telling you guys this event will change. So this, this is normal. That let, It's going to happen. So what you want to do is you just want to go into your 1.7.10 folder. You want to go to server properties, and you want to change your uh, server IP to what your new IPv4 is. And to get your IPv4, that'll that's in the next part. So, yeah. Now, what we want to do, this is basically what I'm telling you guys. For those of you who do not know how to get your IPv4 or your or your default gateway and stuff like that, you want to go over here. You want to type in CMD for command prompt, and then right here under this, this should say IP config. I have had people tell me that they, they don't have IP config, and that's a very strange thing. It is very strange because every Windows, everything Windows should be able to do IP config. And then you should be able to get your default gateway, your IPv4, and a bunch of other information. That is it. This is all you need right here. That's how you get into your router. That is how you get into. That's what you have to type into server properties. That's what you have to do. Everything is here. All your information that you need is right here. Now, how, that's how you do that. Now, another question that came up often is, Fabio, Java is not working. The run.back did not work. Why isn't it working? And then a bunch of people told me. Personally, I cannot sum it up in words because I would just, it's, it's a difficult situation. Java has this thing going on um, that it changes. It's, it's not configured right. So that Java, in some versions, it's some versions, some people don't have it. Java won't be recognized as a command unless you allow it to. So what you want to do here is you want to go to this website. It will be in the description below. You want to follow these step by step. Basically, it's telling you it'll ask you what Java version you have, and it'll teach you how to fix this problem, and you should be good. This is how you fix the run.bat Java thing. Now, it's a bit contradictory because it says to find out what Java you have, you have to use a Java, Java command. That is contradicting to what it's saying because you don't have the Java command, so why would you look Java a command up? So, to find out what you have is you want to go over here. You want to go to where your Java is saved. You want to go to Program 86 Files, Find Java. You have JRAT7, JUR, bleh, JUR7. That means you have, Windows, you have Java 7, you have the version 7. And under here it's going to ask, oh, do you have version 7? Yes, you do. But now you have to figure out, do you have a 32-bit or a 64-bit? Now, from here, what you want to do is you want to go to your control panel. Mine's over here. You want to go to system and security, system. And right under here, you should find 64-bit. It should say 64-bit or 32-bit. Mainly desktop computers and most laptops have 64-bit operating system. And that's it. And you just want to follow this step by step. It'll tell you you have to go into some specific files, specific places. You want to follow that step for step. Do exactly what it says, and you should be good, and you should be able to run that executable. You should be able to run the ASGG.bat and the run bat. That is, those two are the most asked questions. How do, how do I get my IPv4 and, and the default gateway? I just answered it for you guys. And maybe I should have answered that in the beginning of the video, but I will probably put a time to figure that out. So thank you guys for watching. This is a new 1.7.10 uh, server tutorial video. And the last one, it did very well, so I'm doing it again. And I, for this one, mainly the reason I'm doing it, I, I could have just told you guys to do the same thing, just change one thing. But multiple questions came up, and I just want to answer it in one video. So this is how you make it. 
Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video. If you guys want other tutorials and stuff that I am capable of doing, just ask down below. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys in the next one. And what I was saying before was uh, on the